Welcome to our little tutorial in regards to how to set up your chart of accounts within Aplos. And uh, my name is Michael and I have the pleasure of just showing you some tips and tricks in, in this regard. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So where you're going to want to go to your chart of accounts is on the very top here. You're going to want to select fund accounting accounts and account list. Now again, this will take us to the chart of accounts, which will have our funds and all of our other accounts that we will go through. And uh, just a quick forewarning, if you are wanting to see in more specific detail in what accounts are, like assets, liabilities, your funds, income and expenses, we do have another video for that. Uh, again, this video is simply just gonna show you how to set up your chart of accounts. Uh, what to press, where to go, and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So once you're in your chart of accounts, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way from the top to the bottom here. So you'll see that this is going to say your chart of accounts. And so you'll have a little settings icon right here. So if you click on that, you're actually, you have the option to export your chart of accounts. And so this is important with some organizations uh, that sometimes just want a list of their accounts, maybe all their funds and, and whatnot. Uh, so you do have the option for that. You also have the option to hide or show inactive accounts. Um, again, displaying all of them right here. So that's that little gear icon up there. Now moving below, we have our funds. Now our funds are anything, you know, money that we receive for a specific purpose to, to track it that way. And so I just have a couple funds here that I've, uh, set up as, as a test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through how to set up and add a new fund. So you'll see right here you have a button that says add fund. So if we go ahead and click on that, what that's going to do is it's going to create a, a drop down menu and you'll have to enter a name and a color. Now for the name, I'm just going to label this test, test fund color. Now you may be asking yourself, what does this color do? The, really the only thing it does is it color coordinates here on the screen and also in the register where we have graphs with our funds. And I'll show you that right before um, we end this uh, towards the end. So uh, for fun, I'm just going to go ahead and make this red. The same as our utilities fund. And then click save. Once you do that, it's going to tell you that you have successfully added a fund and that they automatically added the following fund balance equity account. So again, uh, when you add a fund here, I've added this test fund, it's going to automatically add it under your equity accounts because all of your equity accounts essentially are your funds. So, and we'll get into that more a bit later, but essentially that is how you add a fund under the funds. Now, if you wanted to edit a fund, again, the fund name or the color, you simply just click onto it and it's gonna create that drop down menu again where you can go ahead and edit the name and the color. So if you decided you want to make this super light blue, you can click on that and click save and it'll go ahead and update that for you. And it'll update you, um, it'll update that for you under the equity account as well as you see here. So moving down here, we have our accounts. So again, you want to make sure that you add all these funds that you want. Um, and again, we have uh, another tutorial in regards to what a fund is uh, within our support center as well. But essentially, it's a any way that your organization receives money for a specific purpose. So moving down here, we're going to go to our assets. Now you have five categories with your chart of accounts. You have your assets, your liabilities, your funds, or equity, income, and expense accounts. And again, these are the foundation of your organization within Aplos and within, within using fund accounting. So let's go ahead and go through this. So first, we're going to click on the asset. And now assets, again, we have another tutorial that goes through what each of these accounts are. Uh, but typically, it's uh, you know, your checking savings account, anything like that. I have uh, other fixed asset accounts, uh, new fixed asset uh, accounts receivable. But let's go ahead and just focus on our current assets. So as you see here, I have a checkings and a savings and a WePay account. Now, 
what we want to do to create a new asset is you'll see this little plus button right next to the group name. So if you go ahead and click that, you'll see another little, your mouse will kind of tell you what that button does and it says add account. So if we click on that, it's going to create a drop down menu here that we can create um, a couple of different things here that we'll go through. So the first is the number. Now with your chart of accounts, um, each of the accounts typically are numbered uh, within our general accepted accounting principles that we follow. So with your assets, it's typically from 1,000 to like 1,999. That's typically the, the number range that it follows. Uh, again, we have other orgs that kind of do their own thing, which is totally fine. Um, but we're going to go ahead and follow that. So I'm going to make this account 1200. And actually, I'm going to make it one. One zero zero. That way it falls right under the checking account here. I'm going to label this again test account just to show you. Status. You have the ability to enable slash disable your accounts and I will go ahead and go through that on one of my other test accounts that I've made. Now we're going to go over here to the type. Now within the type you have a couple different options. You have none use as a register or accounts receivable slash AR. So what these options are is none, obviously it's just a, a typical asset account that you want to track. Use as a register. What that will do is any asset account that you want to track the ongoing balance for, um, like a checking account. And it's going to create this little bank icon, meaning that within a register account, it's going to show that we have the ability to choose this account and then accounts receivable slash AR same thing down here. What it's going to do is it's going to create uh, this account to be tracked under our accounts receivable module, which again, if you are wanting to find more information about that, we also have a video specifically going over those uh, in regards to entering transactions and a, a great article. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select use as a register and go over more about that later activity so these are used by the statement of cash flows report so essentially if you click on this you have the option to choose cash operating investing and financing and these are all the different um, ways you can track this current asset account for this report uh, that is in our reporting section and then you also have the ability to make this a sub account. So if I click on this button here, it's going to say uh, enter a parent account number if this account is a sub account. And the sub account just allows you to, again, as easy as it sounds, make it a sub account to a parent account. Um, so as you see down here under my fixed assets, I have uh, an other fixed asset uh, parent account and then uh, other fixed accumulated depreciation sub account to that account. So that's just one example of what a sub account could be. I'm just going to make this a main account. So I'm not going to make this a sub account. So you see, I have my number, I have my name, the type and the activity, and I do want this enabled. So once I have all the information in, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And what that's going to do is it's going to create my test account under my assets and as you see this will go in numerical order so I forgot that I had my savings account right there but it's going to be right under the savings account this is my test account and you'll see that I have a little bank icon here so quickly what I want to show you is what that looks like in the register so I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to go over to my register now here is my register account. So again, these are anything that I want to track the ongoing balance for. And so up on the top left, you have your account register. And again, these are anything that have these little bank icons next to it. If I click right here, you'll see that these are all of my options that I can choose to essentially go into to track transactions um, or any ongoing balances. Again, we also have another video in, in this regard. So if this is what you're trying to track, I do recommend uh, looking that up in our support center. 
but let's go ahead and go back to our chart of accounts. So once we have our assets done, um, essentially it's going to be the same process with all of our other accounts. Uh, so just to show you our liabilities, I have a credit card here that has a little credit card symbol, meaning that in my register, it's allowing me to choose that as a account register to input transactions in for that. Now it's the same process here. If I click this plus button right here, it allows me to do the same information that I did in my asset accounts. Funds, if you're wanting to add a fund, again, you will have to do this on the very top where it says add funds. Now in each of these categories, you will, you will see the option to add a group. And so let me just kind of show you what that does. So now these groups are my current assets, my fixed assets, and my accounts receivable. So if you want to add a group to where you can drag and drop each account into it, essentially what you can do, oop, I don't want to make that a sub account. Click add group here. I'm going to label it test, oops, test group and click save. And you'll see what that's going to do is it's going to create a group where I'm then able to add accounts under that, or I could drag and drop into that said group. And you'll see that there's a little blue rectangle that kind of follows these accounts, <laughs> but that way you're able to essentially categorize each of your, your accounts in any of these categories, your liabilities, your funds, income and expenses. Again, these are all my funds. So anytime you create a fund up here, it does get created as an equity account. Income, same thing. If you click this plus button, it's gonna have the same information except your income and your expenses are gonna look a little bit different. And let me show you why. So with your income accounts, you're able to essentially add a fund to an income account. And what that does uh, to be more specific is when you input an income um, or a transaction with this said income account, it'll automatically select this fund for you. So you don't have to keep going in and selecting each fund every time you input this. So again, you have your number, your name, the status, is it a sub account? You can make it any fund or you can pick a specific fund that will be tied to the said account. So for this example, I made a contributions income account. I label this uh, number 4,000. The name was contributions income account. I attach it to my general fund so I can track it through there. And I clicked save and it created this uh, income account here. Now again, you can add groups, you can add other accounts under that uh, in the similar plot process that we just went over. <laughs> and then we have our expense accounts. So very similar to our income, you can select any fund to be attached to a said expense account. That way when you're inputting transactions with Annapolis, it will automatically select that said uh, fund account that you had selected. Uh, similar options here, number, name, status, fund, sub account. I'm gonna click out of this so I don't mess anything up. But essentially, once you have all of your funds that we went over, all of your assets, liabilities, equity, you can check here, income and expense accounts, you will have just set up your chart of accounts, which is great. Again, this is the foundation within Aplos in regards to fund accounting. So you do wanna make sure that you do set this up correctly. Um, and the wonderful thing is nothing's locked. You can go in and, and change uh, the account names and, and such like that. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is with your funds, if you do have any transactions tied to a fund, you will not be able to delete a fund. And so again, if you do want to delete a fund, like the one that I created, since it doesn't have any transactions tied to it, I can go ahead and click this delete button here. And what that'll do is that will remove this from my funds and it will also remove it under my equity account. So it's no longer showing there. But again, if it does have a transaction tied to it, so for this example, I'll show you, I click delete. 
it's going to say fund cannot be deleted. I have 115 transactions tied to this said fund account. So please be aware of that. Another thing to keep in mind is if you do change the name of a fund up here, it won't necessarily change this fund's name down here. This is something we we're working on, but currently you do want to keep in mind that if you do change the name up here, so if I change this name, saving fund test, you see that it changed up there, but that it does not change down here. And so you will want to change this as well. So do uh, keep that in mind as well. But again, once you have that set up, then you're ready to move on to the next step, 